Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. So we're in a series called Ghosted. We're talking about being holy ghosted. We're talking about the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit. The first week of this series, we talked about the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Last week, we talked about the man, the Holy Ghost. And this week, I, I, we, we worshiped a little bit longer, and I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. But, so I gotta like, jump right into this. Today, we're gonna talk about myths of the Holy Spirit. Myths, misconceptions, things that are just kind of like straight out lies about the Holy Ghost that we've believed. The church world at large, we've kind of just believed these things and accepted them. So here's myth number one, ready? And I'm gonna go for the jugular. I'm gonna step right in it. I'm gonna be theologically, pick a fight. I'm picking a fight theologically. Jumping right in, here's the first myth, that we only get some of the Holy Ghost at salvation. That we only get some of the Holy Ghost at salvation. And this myth pretty much means that at salvation, you get a little bit, but then you gotta get more, and then you gotta get more, and then you gotta get more, and then one day you can get to my level and be completely full to overflowing. With... See, think about how arrogant that is, right? And listen, just because you've been an OG Christian, you've been a Christian for many, many years, don't mean you got any more Holy Ghost than the guy who got saved today. Did this ever happen to somebody as a kid? You said to your mom, hey mom, can you give me something to drink? And if I was asking for a drink, I wanted Pepsi. Mom, give me, can I have some Pepsi? Because we had Pepsi in our house. If you drink Coke, you're not saved. <laughs> Pepsi, <laughs> Pe Pepsi was the drink in the house, right? Pepsi. So mom, can I have some Pepsi? So she's like, yeah, sure. So she'd go to the fridge, she'd get the Pepsi, she'd pour me a cup, and she'd give me two ounces. And I'm sitting back as a kid, I'm like, everybody got a full cup. Why do I get two ounces, you know? And she's like, well, drink that, and I'll give you more. We don't, because we don't want to be wasteful. And I'm thinking to myself, even at that age, the whole bottle was 99 cents. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to actually waste on your kid? 10 cents if I don't drink it. <laughs> give me a full cup. Give me a full cup. So finally, you know, after arguing, whatever, she gave me a full cup, I couldn't drink it. <laughs> but that's not the point. That's not the point. I think a lot of us think of God and the Holy Spirit the same way. Well, you know, we're gonna get saved, but God's only gonna trust us with just a little bit of Holy Ghost. Amen. And, and use that up, figure that out, and I'm gonna give you more Holy Ghost. And, then, and, then, and as you mature, and as you earn it, you gotta earn credits, like a video game, it's like Mario Brothers, right? You gotta earn more credits so you can get to the next level. Then when you're ready and God can trust you, then he'll give you more Holy Ghost because we don't wanna waste it. I almost fell off the stage. <laughs> we don't wanna waste it, so just save it. And then when I can trust you, I'll give you more. But that's not, dude, that's not how God rolls, man. That's not how God rolls. God is saying, hey, you commit to this. You're in the family, it's all yours. It's all yours. I'm going to give you all the Holy Ghost all the time. So, but where do we get this teaching? Where do we get this belief that we only get a little bit of Holy Ghost and then there's a next step and then there's a next step and there's a next step and then finally, maybe after 20 years of Christianity, you get the fullness of the Holy Ghost, maybe, if you're good enough. But let's take a look. Acts 19, verse 2. I really want to dive into some scripture, study this out. Acts 19, verse 2, and it says... And ask them, Paul the apostle has run into some disciples along the road. He asked them, he says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no. We didn't even know there was a Holy Ghost. We never even heard that there was. Like, what are you even talking about? Like, we haven't even heard there is a Holy Spirit. There's something else? Paul said to them, well, then what baptism did you receive? 
well, John's baptism, they replied. And Paul said, well, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. And if you understand who John the Baptist was, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. He came by and he was baptizing in water. Now, if Jesus is speaking, or if Jesus was alive and Jesus was baptized by John and John was alive, then we understand that Jesus has not died on the cross yet. He has not ascended into heaven. He has not put his blood on the mercy seat, paid the price for sin for all humans. That hasn't happened yet. Well, John's baptism was of repentance. John's baptism was, we are making a statement of faith that we believe in Jesus, so therefore we're being baptized. But it was not, Paul said, that was not a, that was a baptism of repentance. And John told you that the people who would believe in him was the one that was going to come after him. I'm not the man, John said, but the one after me is the man. I am the man that's pointing to the man. My ministry must decrease that the ministry of Jesus might increase. John was pointing out the way to the baptism of Jesus. Watch, on hearing this, on hearing this, faith rose in their heart. Well, we want what you're talking about. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is salvation. Here at Family Church, we preach three baptisms. Okay, and I, I know theologically, you don't have to agree with this, and you can name it whatever you want. The baptism into the name of Jesus is salvation. So whether you, whether you call that salvation, the new birth, being born again, the baptism of Jesus is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you got options. You got options, this can happen in any, any way that you want this to happen. There is a water baptism. A water baptism is your public declaration of what has already happened. I am publicly declaring that I have given my life to Jesus Christ. And then there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit manifests in Acts 1-8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the othermost parts of the earth. These three baptisms. Upon hearing this, they believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then Paul said, now that you're saved, let's go ahead and do the second baptism. He laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with other tongues and prophesied. So this is kind of why people believe like, all right, well, there's multiple phases to how much Holy Spirit you're going to get. They got saved, but they didn't have the Holy Ghost. And then Paul had to pray for them, they had to lay hands on them, then they could get spirit filled. Listen, salvation does its perfect work. Salvation does the perfect work. You get all of God that you're going to get at salvation. But you know what you don't have? You don't have knowledge. You don't know what you got. Ever go to a restaurant? That's an easy question. Ever go to a restaurant? It's not a trick question. You ever go to a restaurant? Okay. You go to a restaurant and they say, what would you like to drink? What am I? Do you Coke. See, there's, another, there's a church right down the street. They drink Coke. You're like, what are my options? Well, we got Pepsi. So we got, the, we got the Pepsi line. We got Pepsi. We got Sprite. We got Mountain Dew. We got Ginger Ale. We got Dr. Pepper. Hey! Dr. Pepper. What are my options? See, until... I know what my options are, I can't make a decision. When you get the Holy Spirit, you get all the Holy Spirit. But you gotta go exploring the options. You gotta go exploring the added features. You gotta go exploring, what did I get? What is everything in this box of salvation that I get in the Holy Spirit? So get this point, big idea today. You get all the Holy Spirit you're gonna get at salvation. At salvation, you get the finished work. You get the finished work. But what you did not get was knowledge and understanding. They said, we haven't even heard there is a Holy Ghost. And how many churches today don't preach the full counsel of the gospel? They preach denomination beliefs. They preach, well, you know, this stuff passed away with the apostles. So I gotta tell you a little bit about me. If that is true, if that's true, number one, if it's true that 
that the gifts of the Spirit and the things of the Holy Ghost passed away with the apostles, then I'm a fake. And I'm man enough to say that. Then, I, then I'm faking a lot. I fake a lot. Then I'm a liar. Okay? So I'll tell you right straight out. Don't believe anything I say. Go read your book. Secondly, when I get to heaven, I'm going to go find out who's the last one. Who the last apostle was that let this thing die? And I'm going to punch him in his mouth. <laughs> but because I'm in heaven, it's not a sin. <laughs> and I'll forget, I'll quickly forget it and I'll be redeemed and it'll be all done, right? But it'll be quick. You're like, yo, who was it? Bow, gun. All right. Yo, let's pray. I will celebrate, sing unto the Lord. Uh, so we'll be good. <laughs> hey. We didn't know that we could receive the Holy Spirit. We didn't know we could speak in tongues. We didn't know that we could prophesy. We didn't know that we could lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. We didn't know that we could operate in words of wisdom and words of knowledge and the gift of faith. We didn't know. No one had told us yet. We only know what we were taught and we believed. So I said, okay, then let your faith rise. Let your faith rise. Let's go to that next place. They live by the knowledge that they possess, and today we live by the knowledge we possess. A lot of churches and denominations believe and live by the knowledge that they have and what they're taught in church. If what you're taught in church is your only spiritual meal, you are an anorexic Christian. I can't possibly, I can't possibly teach you enough word in 35 minutes to sustain you spiritually. Nor is it my job. It is not my job. It is my job to create an atmosphere of a gathering of believers to build one another up in their most holy faith, but then go spend time with God. Amen. Amen. All right. But we don't go exploring. We don't go exploring into the truths of the gospel. We don't go exploring the Holy Ghost. Why? Myth number two. The Holy Ghost is kind of scary and creepy and spooky and weird. Act like you ain't never seen a YouTube video of like someone's Holy Ghost service where the band's like, dum, 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 and all of a sudden they say, hey, 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 Now, I'm poking fun. I'm poking fun, but I'm poking fun at me because I did this nonsense. I did this, all right? And people are like, yo, what's going on? Yo, what? What's the deal? This is weird. Like, go watch a YouTube. There's this one YouTube video where this guy catches some ghost, right? He catches the Holy Ghost. And he, hey, and he runs, and he goes to jump up on, like, top of this railing, and he falls into the baptism tank. <laughs> oh, he caught the ghost. I guess he needed a bath. <laughs> I'm poking fun, but forgive me. Forgive me, but let's discover this. What happens is when you have someone that's a little bit more reserved, someone who's a little bit more introverted, they say, if that's the Holy Ghost, take me off the list. Because that's weird, man. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to look the fool. Then you have some idiot preacher. I'm picking fights today. Then you got some idiot preacher. Wow. If you're embarrassed before man, I'll, he'll be embarrassed before his father in heaven. <laughs> the Bible don't say that. He said if you deny him, he says the rejection of Jesus Christ. Not if you say, yo, that's weird. I don't want that. That's not the same thing, man. We're so beat up by religion. Yes. And the truth is some people act a fool in church services. And 90% of all of this ain't the Holy Ghost at all. 90% of this is human emotion. I'm not saying that you didn't feel something, but what I am saying is that's your personal response to what you're feeling. Don't hate me. So I like to go, 
I, I like to go look at real estate. I'm really big into real estate shopping. I go look at houses and buildings all the time, even though I ain't got no money to buy nothing. <laughs> if there's like an open house, and I'm driving by like, okay, I'm gonna go check this house out. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I'm talking to my agent about this house. <laughs> I'm just nosy. But do you know what I don't like to do in like an older house? I don't like going checking out the basement by myself. I've seen those movies. <laughs> Let's go see what's in the basement. Flip the light on, the light pops. So then your dumb behind is walking down into this spooky basement with your cell phone light on. You don't know what's going on. And a lot of people believe that's the same thing with the Holy Ghost. I'm going down into this weird, creepy, I've seen some creepy stuff. I see people rolling on the floor. That's where the word holy roller comes from. <laughs> and if I go down into this pit of the Holy Spirit, I don't know what's gonna happen to me. I don't know what's here. But you see, unless you go down into those places, you're not gonna get the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You see, when I walk into one of those open houses, it's an open house. I can go into every room of the house. I can go into every closet of the house. You better believe I'm opening the medicine cabinet. I'm weird like that. You never open someone's medicine cabinet? You're not supposed to open people's medicine cabinets? I have all access to check that house out because it might be mine eventually. I have all access to everything in that house. But wonder if I don't go access all the parts that are mine. Then I don't know what's there. I don't know what's possible. I don't know that I can use it. See, and this is what happens with the things of the Holy Ghost. You have all the Holy Ghost. But have you gone exploring in your faith? I haven't because it's weird and it's spooky. You have access. Matthew 16, 19, Jesus says this, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He's saying, when I die, I'm gonna go down into hell. I'm gonna whoop the devil up. I'm gonna take the keys of death hell and the grave. I'm gonna raise up victorious. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Yo, at salvation, you're rolling with the keys to the kingdom. You have all access, but you need to go access it. Watch well, what he says. Whatever you bind on earth, heaven backs your play. Do you know what the problem is? We wanna say, well, God doesn't really trust me with all of the Holy Spirit. No, no, no. You don't trust you. He says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Jesus raises victoriously. He says to his disciples, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Now go, I give it to you. Make disciples of all nations. Do you know the difference between authority and responsibility? At your job, you have responsibilities. And if you don't do your job, bye-bye. But there's a difference between having responsibilities and having authority. So you wanna know if you have authority? Walk into your job tomorrow and say, sir, I'd like to spend $10,000 of the company's money. If you can't spend it, you don't have authority. You have responsibility. Authority says, I've given it to you. I trust you. Whatever you need to do your job, go do it. So he says, whatever you bind on earth, I back your play. Whatever you, I trust you. I've given you the authority. I've given you the keys. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Go, knowing that heaven backs your play. Yeah, but wonder if I 
but, but wonder if I don't do it right. But wonder, but wonder if I don't know what to say. That, that's the problem. It's never been a God problem. It's been an us problem. It's been a lack of confidence. It's been a lack of, let's just do this. All right. So we need to go in there and start exploring what's in this, what's in this basement, what's in the, or the attic, whatever, wherever you want to say, high or low, whatever. What's in the mystery box? Well, speaking in tongues is in there. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, prophet, prophecy, the gift of healing, uh, the gift of faith. When you see someone who steps out and they're like, yo, I know this is gonna happen, I have the faith for it, and you're like, yo, you're crazy. They might be operating in the gift of faith. All of these are wrapped up in the power and the presence of the spirit-filled life. But the lack of knowledge and the preconceived idea that this is weird keeps us from accessing everything that he has. First Corinthians 14 verse one, it says this, follow the way of love. So if you want to get to the things of the Holy Spirit, the pathway is love. Have you ever gone to a church where they are the, hey, ba, ba, ha, they're, they're, they're speaking in tongues on stage, they're jumping around, but then they're all nasty to each other? You hypocrite, fake church, you fake. You're faking it, man. You're faking the game. You cannot be all Holy Ghost but then not walk in love. Because to access through things of the Spirit, the pathway to get there is love. Follow love. You know what has happened to a lot of churches? They experienced the move of the Holy Spirit once, and then they kept duplicating it every week after. But if, you, but if you're gonna be in, the, in a move of the Spirit, but then after church, now you're gonna start gossiping, after church, you're then going to go get together and overeat, become a glutton. Come on, somebody. We'll be for real up in church. I'm picking fights today. It says you have to follow the path of love. When you follow the path of love, now eagerly desire the gifts, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. So speaking in tongues is great. Build yourself up. Do it. But nobody knows what you're saying. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for the strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. If you want to know if something is a prophecy, it will strengthen you encourage you or comfort you. If someone stands up and says, by the Spirit of God, shame on you, you heathenistic, get up and walk out. Because they're speaking under some other spirit than the Spirit of God. Because Scripture tells us that a prophetic word is for strengthening, encouraging, and comforting. Now, let me tell you, I've been in this game a long time. I've been in this game a long time. I could play the game. I could make you think that I am the most spiritual. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Speak, Lord. I could play that crap. I could play that card. I'm good at it. Hey. Feel the anointing. Hey. Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. Yes, 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 Lord. Okay, I'll say that to them right now, these people. Dude, I could play that game. I could play that game. But do you know what playing that game does? It exalts me as the pastor to a place that you can't get to. And that's not the ministry of Jesus. It said, oh man, it says him who knew no sin became sin. That he made himself equal to us, that we might be equal to him. He did not elevate the office of anybody to a place that could not be obtained by everybody. So do you know when I go into my message, I'm like, I don't know who this is for. This isn't in my notes, but I'm about to say something. When I do that, I'm stepping into prophecy. But do you know what I don't do? I don't make it about me. I don't make it a show. I'm being honest, like, 
I don't know where this is coming from right now. This is not in my notes. I didn't prepare this, but I believe somebody needs this. Now I just give, I give a word now that's strengthening, encouraging, and comforting. That's prophecy. So when you're hanging out with somebody and you start talking to them and they ask you a question about a problem that they're having and all of a sudden you start saying stuff that you didn't know you knew, you know why? Because you didn't. You're prophesying. And you're strengthening, comforting, and encouraging them. And they walk away, dude, I needed that talk. That was awesome. You were just used by God. And it was so naturally supernatural. And that's how it needs to be. Dude, if it's weird, people are gonna be run away from you, man. I don't really wanna desire the gifts, Pastor Mike, because I've seen that happen. I've seen church services where people just lose their mind. Myth number three, if I catch the spirit, I'll lose control. And I don't want that. I don't wanna run around the building like crazy. Yo, I was in a church service one time. No lie. What did my son say? No cap. No cap. <laughs> hey, this dude gets up and he catches the Holy Ghost. He went running across the room and didn't make the turn to go down the aisle. <laughs> my man ran straight face into the wall, broke his nose. Knocked him out. We had to call the ambulance to come get him. You trying to tell me that was the Holy Ghost? Well, I guess the Holy Ghost needed to break his face. I guess the Holy Ghost had to bust his booger box. For real? For real? How about, how about this? Because I've also been in a service where I'm standing there and I'm feeling the spirit of God, the person next to me, they go down on their knees and they just start crying. <gasps> but I'm not crying. Same spirit, same touch. But our reaction to the spirit of God is different. So you know what? Someone might feel the spirit and they start jumping and dancing. Someone might feel the spirit and they get on their knees and crying. But that's not the Holy Ghost making them do that. It's their response to the divine coming in contact with humanity. If the Holy Spirit were to force himself on you in a way that you did not want him to move in your life, that's not a, that's not a good situation, right? People get in trouble for that kind of stuff. Forcing themselves on someone when they don't want it. And the Holy Spirit doesn't do that. In fact, God Almighty doesn't do that. God Almighty says, I stand at the door and knock. If you would but let me in, I would then come in and I would sup with you and you with me. I would share with you the secrets of my covenant. But I'm not kicking your door down. Although he could kick the door down, he chooses not to. He says, I will wait until you invite me in. And when you invite me in, we will partake of this together. When you see someone losing control, ah, ah, that's emotionalism. It's emotionalism. Now some people, they need a good cry because they've been bottling up mess for years. They need to get it out and there's no other platform or place for them to do that. So okay, in a safe environment where if you need to cry, we can monitor that, we can keep that, we'll handle that. Somebody, somebody might need to like let a scream out because they've been bothering something, and we get that. But that doesn't mean that that's the Holy Ghost doing that through them. It is their human reaction to a work that the Holy Spirit is doing in their life. So, man, if he gets in there and all of a sudden, man, like a memory is triggered from something that happened, there could be psychological, you know, reactions that happen. We need to understand that. So, but you don't lose control. But Pastor Mike, it happened to me and I lost control. I get what your experience is, but your experience can be a lie. What's not a lie is the Bible. Can we look at what the scripture says? 
Galatians 5.22. When you get the Holy Spirit, you get something called the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now the fruit of the Spirit is love. See, because it has to start with love because love's the pathway. Love is the pathway to the Holy Spirit. It is by love that we got the Holy Spirit. It's by love that we operate. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and hey, That don't say spirit controlled. That don't say you're going to get the Holy Ghost and it says that when you get the Holy Ghost, you actually get self-control. You get self-control. And believe it or not, you're in control of how much you allow the Holy Spirit to operate in your life. You are in control of that. I know, you may have not seen that before. But watch this, 1 Corinthians 14, 32. The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophet. You get what this is saying? That the operation of the gifts are subject to the person using the gifts. So the Holy Spirit came to you and said, hey, I want you to give a prophetic word. Uh Uh-uh. Guess what he's going to do? He's going to go to the next person. He ain't going to force you. He ain't going to speak through you. (laughs) Okay. There's only one passage in the Bible where like God actually jacked somebody up and it was Jacob and he wrestled with an angel. That's the only time that someone got jacked up, but, but, he, but Jacob did that to himself. He wanted a blessing. <laughs> so he, he picked a fight anyway. God, watch this, for God, for God, oh I love this, I love this. For God is not the author of confusion, but peace. Why did we do a longer worship set today? Well, one, we had Jordan come in because he, he, was, he led worship for our teen camp out this weekend. It went really well, so we're like, hey, just hang out and do the weekend with us. But we wanted to prepare the room in a moment of worship that we could then receive the full gospel of scripture in an atmosphere of peace, right? He's the author of peace. Maybe you're new to church. Maybe you're new to church words and peace doesn't make a lot of sense to you. But you could say today, and I could say emphatically across the board, almost, I would say 99.2675% would say during the music today, it felt nice. Right? So, so let's say that. Let's say you don't know church words. You don't understand church. You're not a Christian person. So I don't really know anointing. I don't know Jesus. I don't. But I, I felt nice. So let's unpack that. I felt nice. Well, what, what part of nice? Well, I wasn't anxious. And, and I wasn't thinking about the mistakes I made this week that kind of just faded away. And I felt calm. I could have stayed there and let it go for another hour and it wouldn't have bothered me. I felt good. Well, what you felt was the peace of God. And we wanted to make sure that we did a lot of practice in this to make sure that today we didn't have all the words on the screen. We didn't have specific sets. We had about 10 songs that we knew that we could go anywhere we wanted with it. But what we wanted you to experience today is the presence of God. Now, you may not believe that that was God, and that's okay. You may just say, well, it just felt nice. The music was nice. That's fine. Let's start. We'll start there. I'll meet you there. I'll meet you at nice. But I want to tell you that there's more. There's more than just nice. There's joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's a peace that surpasses all understanding. There is wisdom and knowledge and understanding beyond your years. There's a blessing that can come upon you that everything you set your hands to prospers and successful. There's there's a blessing that, that heaven comes behind you and says, whatever you confess, you shall have. 
See, it grows in this Christian life. I wanna talk to you today as we're closing out to tell you this, like, you're in a spirit-filled church. You're in a church that believes that the gifts of the Spirit and the operation of the Holy Spirit are for today. How we do that is going to look very natural and very seamless. We are never gonna draw attention to the man of God to manifest the presence of God. It will be a corporate unit of knowing God is here. Because we need us all to understand this. It's not me as the pastor, it's we as the church. What you saw today, how we worshiped, that's how I worship in my personal life. I'll start with one song, and then I'll just kind of flow to different songs that just make sense that are kind of in the same key, and I'll sing four or five songs in in my morning as I'm getting ready. That's exactly what it looked like today. Um, Not as pretty as his voice, but something like that. What I wanna invite you today is this. I wanna invite you today to begin this journey of the Holy Spirit. Begin the journey of the Holy Spirit. That's why we created the Acts, the Book of Acts study guide. It is available at the Welcome Center. Each day we are reading one chapter of the Book of Acts for 28 days, and then we're studying out what's happening in those books. Acts 2 is the beginning of the Spirit-filled church. Acts 1.8 tells us that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Jesus is preparing us. And then we're looking at the Acts 2 church, the Acts 4 church, as the Spirit of God begins to spread throughout the churches. And, and we're just saying, Lord, that didn't die, that didn't end. We want to be part of that same move today. Amen. But in order to have that in operation, you have to start at the baptism in the name of Jesus. You have to start at salvation. And the Bible says this in Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For if the heart man believes with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And here today, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we'd love to lead you in a prayer of salvation. And then we'd like to invite you out to Saturday the 28th, where we will offer the baptism of the Holy Spirit We will offer the gifts of the Spirit. We will pray and take time to do that and work with each individual person in that realm. If you say, hey, you know, that's just not for me, then don't show up on the 28th, all good. But if you want to experience that and see what that's about in a very natural way, then the 28th, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. is where we're going to step into that, amen? But if you're here, you say, Pastor Mike, I need to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. If you're watching online and you'd like to step out of spiritual death into spiritual life, we'd love to offer salvation to you today. And we love you so much that corporately as a family, we'd like to pray this prayer out loud with you. And it goes like this, if you repeat with me. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're watching online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen in one of the chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to connect with you and send you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room today and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, I would love to take two seconds and celebrate you. Would you just wave at me and say, hey, that's me. I prayed that for the first time today. Anybody at all real quick as I scan the room? Yeah, I see you. Anybody else real quick? Awesome. Praise God. Amen. Love it. You as well, right outside those doors, we have that devotional called Starting Point. But maybe you're here today and you're like, I don't know about any of this. Like, yeah, the guy singing was cool, but you're still kind of weird, Mike, with the shirt matching the sneakers. I'm not really sure about that. But I'd like to know a little bit more. We have a booklet at the Welcome Center called Welcome Home. It talks about Christianity. And at the end of that book, it has the same prayer that we just prayed that is our free gift to you. If you need prayer for any reason today, we will have care team members at the front of the stage and at the high top tables in the lobby. Let me bless you. Father, we thank you today that this word will never return to you void, but it will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. 
Lord, I thank you and I praise you that, 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 that the Holy Spirit comes alive to every believer today as they begin to open the doors of the options that you've placed in their lives. Lord, I bless everyone in the sound of my voice. They're the head and not the tail above, never beneath. They're blessed coming in, blessed going out. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.